welcome to another episode of What's Your Grind Podcast. I'm here with a very special guest, Ryan Harrow. That's good. <laughs> Thank you for coming in today. Um, I appreciate it. Ryan is a hoop legend that is currently playing professional basketball overseas. Where are you right now? Uh, I just came back from France, so I mean, it's, I don't know where I'll be this upcoming season, but uh I hope I'm back in France. I like France. Okay. Yeah. And he's also a father to his grown family. I am. How old is Blaze? Blaze is five now. She was born in Poland. Okay. So she got the overseas experience, so it's cool. Right. And he's also a Georgia State Panther graduate. I am. Yes. And you, um, like I said before, you finished your seventh year over... um, Overseas playing professionally, yeah, correct? Yeah, uh, just finished my seventh year in France. Uh, it would have been eight, but, uh, you know, I had my surgery on my back and stuff, so mm-hmm. I had to sit out that year, and then COVID happened. So Right. Okay, got you. So what we like to ask here, um, always the same question. What's your grind? Explain your grind, and tell us, like, a little intro about yourself. Uh, a little intro about myself, um, I'm Ryan Harrow. You know, I've been playing basketball since I was about two years old, like, you know, on the little toy hoop joint, but like in an organized joint, probably five or six and mm-hmm. just been grinding since then. Since I was six, I was playing in like three basketball leagues just to, you know, do it all year around and it paved off for me, you know, mm-hmm. in middle school, I wasn't ranked. I was still like five, four. <laughs> My uh, height. Yeah, I, I was small come middle school. Then uh, I moved to North Carolina to live with my sister in uh, Charlotte to go to a private school, uh, play varsity in the eighth grade, and I started to get better and better. And then by the time my 10th grade year hit, I grew to be what I am now, 6'1". Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it just started to take off with the... raps. I yeah. <laughs> Once I got taller and... Uh, I could compete with the big guys that wasn't pushing me around as much. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, I, I I could do this. This is smooth. Got you. So in high school, like you said, you moved back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Um, you were first team, um, all state Gatorade Player of the Year, and yeah. averaging over thirty plus points. You uh, come your senior year. Yeah. Um, what type of work ethic and what type of grind did you have to do to achieve that type of success? Uh. Well, first of all, I'm going to give a shout-out to Mark Edwards because uh, once I moved back from uh, North Carolina, mm-hmm. uh, I was playing with my sister's husband, Rosto Hatchet, at the um, private school I was going to. Okay. I, he helped me out a lot, too. But once I moved back to Atlanta with Mark Edwards, um, we was on it every day, every day. Like, uh, I only went to school half the day mm-hmm. up until 12, and then once 12 hit, Two o'clock, I was in the gym get, getting shots so up, boom, boom, boom. Then I had to go to my uh, school practice. That was from probably like four to five, uh, four to six, four to seven maybe. Mm-hmm. I leave for my school practice. I go back with Mark. We go to a gym from about eight to 11, and then he dropped me back off at home. I get home around 12, 30, my mom waiting outside, like, why you got my son out this late? <laughs> like, what you doing? But we grinding, it, mom. Right, but, it, but it, you know, the work showed. I went from being unranked to five-star nationally, uh, NC State, Kentucky, all that stuff. So One of the top PGs in your class, top five. Yeah, correct? so, yep. So it was, I mean, it was hard, but it was fun, too. Like, the, the work was fun, Uh Cause you could just tell, like I'm getting better, I'm getting better. Like I'm starting to dunk on folks now. Build your confidence. Right. The, the hoop mixtapes are coming out, so like I want to oh, be I good. Saw them. I, saw I say them. I want to be good every week, cause every week a new one gonna come out. So I, I just was like, we got to be in the gym. Let's just stay in the gym, and it worked out. Right. Taking a closer look at your basketball resume, um, playing on the best teams, playing with the best, you know, players and against the best competition. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your college journey like, you know, going from NC State to UK um, and finishing at Georgia State? What went into making your decision? Like, why did uh, you want to go to NC State and then after that? Well, for NC State, I got that scholarship when I was a 10th grader. Okay. And I had still hadn't hit my growth spurt yet. Mm-hmm. And um, the coaches were still uh, messing with me, you know. 
So I was like, you know, and it was a black coach. Right. So, you know, I, I wanted to play for a black coach. I can't gotcha. lie. Um, I like both the, the whole coaching staff. They was all good to me and no other um, high major D1 really believed in me because I was so small. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to stay committed to them. Uh, I like how they treated me. And right. I, I went ahead and committed my sophomore year. So I didn't even do the whole like. Let's go on trips and see these other schools. I said no. I want right. to. I want to play in the ACC, NC State. My brother is going with me, um, so why not? And it was cool at NC State. You know, we uh, we had our ups and downs that year. Very very talented team with a a whole bunch of guys that just you know wanted to play well and do well. And you know sometimes it doesn't mesh, but really good guys, uh, really talented guys that a lot of them went on to play, you know, professionally, whether it be NBA or overseas. Mm-hmm. Um, my coach that next season uh, wasn't there. So I, I felt that was the time to take my opportunity to do the whole little uh, go see the schools, visits and stuff. Right, um, that you kind of didn't do before. Right, so I, I went to Texas, I went to Louisville, I went to Kentucky, Georgia, and I had one more plan for St. John's because of uh, New York. But when I went to Kentucky, it was just a different feel. Kyler mm-hmm. Perry was just like, I don't need you. Like, I, I don't need you to come play for me. Everybody want to come play for me, but I, right. I want you. Right. And I was like, well, shoot, if you want me, I'm coming. Because mm-hmm. if you looked at the trajectory of all their players and point guards, you play there and you go to, you the, go league. to the league. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? So, uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen like that for me, but everybody mm-hmm. has their own journey. Right. Um, the year that I, you know, I sat out there one year, they won the national championship, so I got to see that whole experience and how hard they worked and what they put into the grind to win. Right. So I, I wanted to do that the following year, and then right before the season started, my father had a stroke. Mm-hmm. They uh, my, and my family didn't tell me because they know how concerned uh, I'd be about my family. So they didn't tell me at first, and when they told me, I just immediately got up and left. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, that that wasn't the smart choice to do because you know I gotta be there for my team and stuff. But I did get up and leave, and when I left, it kind of made it rocky, you know. Um, from with, a player with, standpoint, with, with, yeah, or within a with the with the coaches and with the team, because they just thought you know you need to be more focused on basketball. They they want you to be concerned about your family and everything, but you know at Kentucky basketball, 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 right, it was all yeah basketball. Right. And I I get that you know you you trying to be a great team, and you just had a great team just a year before, so it was a, a lot of pressure, I guess you would say. My father is good, but you know he's not the same. But it, it just dwelled on my mind a lot because I right. saw somebody that uh you know moving around normal all my life and then to see him he can't even go use the bathroom or something by himself you know what I'm saying it, right. it was hard on me so that that year was up and down for me as well and uh at the end of the year we just decided I go to Georgia State it's closer to my dad like five minutes away I could help him and he could come see my games and stuff and I did really well at Georgia State, uh, right. playing with R.J. Hunter and uh, other guys that um, went on to play overseas as well. And I think we turned Georgia State around into it's the best college in Georgia right now. Mm-hmm. And it's not, you know, it's not Georgia Tech or Georgia or any of that, but we're right. the, they're the best college in it, in Georgia. Did you have any regrets, like, if you could have done it differently um, dealing with your father's situation? Would you, uh, or would you just keep it exact, exactly the same? Nah, for sure I would have treated it differently because we could have did this podcast in my own crib <laughs> <laughs> if, if I would have just treated it, you know what I'm saying, just uh, treated it differently. But, you know, you live and you learn. I was young. Yeah. I was young. I was concerned about my pops. And yeah. like I said, everybody takes their own journey, y'all. Um, yeah. But for sure I wish I would have handled it differently just been stronger mentally if I was stronger mentally er- everything else would have you know panned out for me and I know is this true tell me if it's wrong or right y'all have a saying family first yeah 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 I, and is that's it tatted always on you yeah I got it tatted on me I got only the family family first all of mm-hmm. that I got my all the girls and my family tatted on me everything because yeah. like 
I'm real family oriented. Exactly. Uh, I love my family and just, you know, always want to be there for them. And I, I've just dealt with a lot of people because they saw me coming up and they was like, oh, he about to be this and that. And when it didn't pan out, where was that? You know, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it's always family for me. Right. And do you think that you had the opportunity or the outlet to, you know, receive any, like, help where you said like mentally you could have just been stronger, but you probably made a really good decision to check on your dad. Um, but in that case, did you, do you think Um, you had the backing, um, the outlet to speak to anybody or kind of Kentucky, Kentucky did a a really good job. Uh, and they worked with me for real. Like, uh, they let me go be with my family during the season when I just, I didn't have it mentally or, uh, My mom moved to Kentucky to be there with me just to, you know, help me out. I was just in such a bad funk mentally. Like, nobody could really bring me out of it. I wasn't enjoying playing basketball. Right. I was just going through the motions and stuff. And you could tell on the floor because it was two totally different people from, you know, what people expected to how I played. And that that's nothing but mental because I was right. still practicing and doing everything that all the other players was doing. It was just like I was in my own head so much. Right. I understand. And when you say practicing, going back to kind of taking it back to your red shirt year, mm-hmm. how was that practicing with those caliber players? Like, we already know what Big Blue Nation do. Like, yeah. they cycle those guys through. I'm watching a draft. They got five guys yeah, yeah, yeah. in the league, you know. How, how was that pra- um, practicing as a red shirt? Uh, that, that year was great. Honestly, because so the year that I came into Kentucky was the NBA's lockout year. Mm. So, um, and the team we had, uh, Marcus Teague, Deron Lamb, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, Mm -hmm. Darius Miller, uh, Anthony Davis, of course. Oh, (laughs) I I thought Boogie was still there. No, no, he left that year before. Terrence Jones. Mm -hmm. Uh... I think all six of them got drafted that year. <laughs> so that's six people just on one team right, right. there, and that's not counting uh, Kyle Wiltshire, who's playing overseas right now in Turkey. Um, they had, like, Mr. Basketball uh, from Kentucky on the team. So, like, we battling every day. Mm-hmm. And crazy thing is they said I was out playing every guard in, within the practice. Right. So there was, like um, – that that following year after I had to sit out on the draft board, I was projected like number seven mm-hmm. in the draft. So I'm like, all right, mentally I'm getting back um, right. I know I didn't play for a whole year. And that people don't understand when you don't play for a whole year in the organized game, like it right. takes a little time to like get back into the gel of things. Right. Um, but I was hype, hype, hype. I saw project the projection. I was like, all right, let's just keep working. And then my father had the stroke. Right. And everything just, I wasn't doing nothing for real, for real. So, right. like I said, being mentally strong and just steady grinding, staying on the grind and knowing what the, what the overall outcome is um, should be the main goal and what sticks in your head, not all the negative stuff. Right, absolutely. I think that's really good advice. Especially when you have, like, you're going to a school like that, like I just said, rattling off kids that's going to to the league. And so is it safe to say that's you had that same expectation, right? Nah, for sure, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you said your (laughs) name, you said number seven, right? Yeah, when uh, even before I made the decision to go to uh, college, I was begging my mom, like, just let me go overseas for one year Mm -hmm. and then – I now can, that's the thing. Yeah and, and see, yeah, and I was begging my mom because I just kept telling my mom my game is not really fit for college. It's more fit for the NBA because, you know, it's spaced out and it's really like go get one. Yep. You still got to play within the team, but it's like just go get one. Mm-hmm. In college, it's more structured. Point guard, you know, run the team. Even though now point guards is really like, you know, go get one too. Right. But um, I just thought my game was – even though it would have been difficult overseas too, because those just grown men playing and they really structured. But I, I yeah. think I would have been learning more because it was only basketball, no school, and I would have been getting paid right at, <laughs> at seventeen years old. So, right. 
I think that would have been smart. But like I said, I, I had a great experience, though, at yeah. all three of my schools, NC State, Kentucky, Georgia State. I, I enjoyed it, and yeah, I'm thankful. Yeah. How did you feel mentally, emotionally when those league dreams weren't met? Uh, I don't even know how to put it because, like, after I didn't do so well at Kentucky – I kind of knew, like, you know, you kind of, you you dwindled your chances, not messed them up completely, but dwindled it just because that that's the main stage. That's when the lights is on and everything like that. But, you know, I was still trying to play well to get right. to the league. So when I went to Georgia State, I averaged 18 mm-hmm. playing with a dude that got drafted. Right. Then that was my junior year. Then my senior year, I averaged 20 playing with a dude that's about to get drafted. And it's it just still didn't pan out. But you know, right. I still went. To, I still make money overseas. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm still seeing the world and stuff. It was just so I, I didn't even get down on myself for real. I was just like, you know what? I'm still hooping. I'm seeing the world. I take my my family with me around the world to see everything that I'm seeing, and right. like I, I'm cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. After all that, I'm, you graduating from Georgia State. Um, how was it for you after college? What were, what was your thoughts like? What's my next move? Oh, I knew I was going to play basketball. Yeah. So, like, uh, once I left Georgia State, um, I was just waiting on my contract. I didn't know where I would be or what my contract would look like, mm-hmm. but I knew I was going to keep playing basketball because, like, I'm nice. Right. Like, <laughs> Like, no I'm matter, nice. no matter, <laughs> you know, all the stories that people have heard about me and stuff like that, like, I, I could still play ball. So I knew right. I was going to get something, and I was just going to have to work my way up from whatever my contract was, you know, just keep getting better and better each year. And that's what happened until I had my back surgery. How does someone go about anyone, and you can speak about, you know, your testimony to getting a contract to go overseas. How does somebody go about that? Um, How did you go about that? Well, I, I mean, you know, I had my agent. Okay. Uh, and I just put my trust in my agent. You know, he did all the negotiation, all the talking with the team. And once the team was interested in me, you know, they gave me a call. We speak and we see how, you know, I may fit in with the team that they have already. And then it's, it's back to going to the agent on the agent's behalf and we we go from there so it's some some people do it themselves you know like right. they they get their contracts themselves and they talk to these teams themselves but uh i'm with the agency so like that's y'all job you know right. what I'm, saying? And I'm, I'm trusting y'all and putting my faith in y'all right and how would you say well let me ask you this first have your goals and aspirations changed over time from like you know, being younger, coming up in this game to the Ryan that you are now? And if so, how have they changed? I mean, the main goal for me now, because I have a family, is just to always be able to take Take care of my family and, you know, for them to enjoy life as much as possible. Um, Like, I I have my daughter and my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, And... I like to think that they, you know, they go with me every year overseas and mm-hmm. they just chilling. They do what they want to do when they want to do it and they get to see the world. And I I, th- I think that's big for me. So that my main goal is that, but I want to I want to play on those biggest teams and compete at the highest level and like that that's what my trajectory was like my I think it was my 4th year in mm-hmm. Greece. I was on that trajectory. Like, it was almost like, a, oh, maybe you'll get some NBA looks. You're This how well you're playing, and I got a new agent. And then midseason, I just couldn't walk no more. Yeah. And that's when I had to find – that's when I found out that you need to do something to your back. I didn't know if it was surgery or what. I was nervous to do it in Greece because, you know, I, I want to be able to understand what they're saying when they're right. speaking. So right. I came back home. I try not to do the surgery so fast, mm-hmm. and but it, it ended up having to get it done still. And then since then, you know, 
it's been a for real grind because yeah. I, I put on so much weight. I ain't played basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm worried about my back if it's going to ever be right again. Right. So I, I just been on the grind like I'm back as a rookie now. Right. Taking it back to the basics, basically. Yeah, for sure. How was your first season overseas? Like, how was that, you know, you family first. Um, at this time, you didn't have Blaze. little Blaze. Uh-uh. Um, so how was that packing it up? and just going somewhere you've never been before and leaving your family? Uh, I don't think I cried. I ain't cried. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> no, nah, I don't think I cried. I think I was cool, one, because I knew Nish was coming, right? which is my girlfriend. Uh, I knew she was coming. I think she came a month after I got there, so that was good to have her there. I mean, my first year was an experience, though, for real, like playing – I didn't get paid for the first three months overseas. I heard about that. Right. Like, not from, like, I heard about, like, a consensus overseas. Yeah. Like, you may not get paid on time. Right. And I, I just <laughs> I just bought a Benz before. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> oh, I need them coins. <laughs> I, just, I need them coins. I just bought a Benz before, you know, I left because I'm like, yeah, I just signed a, you know, a contract. This is guaranteed money. Boom, right. boom, boom. <laughs> I didn't get paid the first three months. And Nish was there with me. I don't know how we ate food. I don't know how we did anything. We we was on like a real strict eating fish every night to the point where we got tired of eating fish. Our refrigerator was probably like this big. <laughs> Our bed was, it felt so bad that she just slept on the couch and I pulled the mattress out to the living room and I slept on the floor. Mm. It was just, that. that's a real grind. That's why right. I, I respect people that play overseas because... You're away from your family, the language barrier, the food, and you may not be in the best situation all right. the time. And people don't know that. they like, oh, he play overseas. Yeah. Like, like, he's straight. He's yeah. living it up. No. And it's, it's really not like that. Right. Not not everywhere. Some places is really nice. But where I started from, it was tough. Yeah. It was real tough. But it was nice. See, like, we would walk out of our apartment, and it's straight ocean. That's all you see. Nice blue ocean. So you'll be like, all right, I'm not even worried about it. But I need, right. I need my paper. I need my money. Yeah, I need my money at some point. Yeah. <laughs> and so have you ever felt like, you know, everything that you put into this game, mm. you know, from being little to hitting that growth spur every day you in the gym, do you ever feel like the game, like, hasn't rewarded you in a correct way of some sort? Uh, first, I want to say I love the game. I, yeah. lo- I love basketball. And the game has given me way much more than I could have ever expected, mm-hmm. you know, being all over the world and stuff like that. But it, in instances, I have been like, man, I worked too hard to not – like when I was in high school, I didn't make McDonald's All-American or Jordan Elite 24, none of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm a top 25 player. Right. How I don't make it. That's when I'm like, dang, it didn't reward me. But, I mean, in hindsight – it really don't even matter if you make those things because if you keep on working and perform the way that you're supposed to, you could have been a two-star or like John ja Morant. He was a three-star. Yeah. Now he John ja Morant. He him. I'm about to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He John ja Morant. So yeah. it's like that. that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying like being mentally strong and not even worrying about all that other stuff. And I think just me, because I was getting so much hype and publicity my junior and senior year, I was like, how I didn't get this, you know? Right. But basketball for sure has done so much for me that I I could never repay it. I don't never <clears> – <throat> I know the ball going to stop bouncing for me at some point, but I still want to be hands-on with it at, in some way, form, or fashion. Right. And – You know, having your family overseas and taking your family, you know, back and forth. Mm -hmm. How has being a father changed you and evolved you, if it has evolved you? Um, Being a father, for sure, done slowed me down, Uh you know. uh, Really, I could stay in the crib all day with Blaze, and I'm straight. Like, (laughs) we good. She going to chill with me. She may get on my nerves a little (laughs) bit, but, like, as long as I got that core, we could stay in the house all day and we enjoy each other and excuse me. And we straight, you know, Blaze is my best friend. Mm-hmm. You know, Blaze Your twin. I about, I about to say, you know, <laughs> Blaze is with her mom a lot because I gotta play basketball, but 
when I'm in the house or I'm there, like Blaze is right here with me all the time. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's just my best friend. I, I love that I started the family and, you know, had Blaze and she was born overseas. So mm-hmm. like she got the dual citizenship and right. everything. So I, it was great having Blaze for real. So cute. And I know a lot of times be, with myself being an athlete, mm-hmm. like we struggle sometimes. It's like, all right, when you speak about that basketball stop, going to start bouncing one day, Yeah, what's next for Ryan Harrell and your family? Like, what, what does that future look like? And have Man. you even tapped into that? Because I know it's a hard it, it, it's a hard pill to swallow. Nah, like, um, it's crazy you say that because me, my mom, my brother Lorenzo Brown, who I keep talking about, and then my, you know, Joel, we yeah. all went out uh, to eat yesterday, and my mom was just like, like y'all, it's time. Right, it's time for y'all to start a business. The name Ryan Harrow or the the name Lorenzo Brown within the state of Georgia or even outside of Georgia. Like people know who we are and like they are still interested in our stories and tapping in and stuff like that. So we uh we just brainstorming right now. Uh, hopefully, I don't think as long as my body is healthy, I could keep playing ball for right. for a little minute because yeah. it is. It's easy over there to hoop. You just got to play the right way. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hoping to keep bouncing for a little bit. And, you know, like I said, I, I want to have my hands on with basketball in some way, form, or fashion once it starts stops bouncing. And I don't know, you know, fashion. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. You know, but something. Something. Cause I gotta, bright. Yeah, I got to take care of my family. Right. So something's right. going to happen. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. Well, I appreciate you coming through. Sharing your story with us, um, letting the people know, you know, just how hard it is, you know, even being a top prospect. At the end of the day, you had a lot of work to put in to get where you are, and right. you're still working to this day. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> said, I, bet, damn right. I, I picked you up from the airport, <laughs> dropped you off, and went and did my yoga session. Like, I'm, right. I'm still trying to grind now to, so I could better myself even to this day because – it's a whole bunch of money out there that can be made, and hey, it's just waiting for somebody to go take to it. touch it. I'm telling you, it's too much money out here for I'm us to not be touching you. it. Yeah, now nah, I feel you. Well, let the people know where they can find you. Let them know them socials, uh, and when you circle back <laughs> and start that business, we gonna right. we gonna get right back to the podcast. I don't again. do no, you know. Instagram. I'm on Snapchat only for my family. I don't even know my Snapchat name. I think uh, my Twitter is at R A H twelve fifty five. That's that's what I'm on mostly. But I don't even tweet that much for real, for real, unless I'm smacked or something. <laughs> nah. But that's it. I appreciate y'all having me up here, and you know, thank thank you, thank you. All right, don't forget to follow us at Grind Season LLC. That's Facebook and Instagram, and visit our website at www.grindseason.co. Yeah.